Hello everyone, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to focus on trigonometric proofs again, only this time doing some strategies with fractions. Let's uh, look at one particular problem here. 10x plus cotan. Show that it equals to the secant times the cosecant. I'm going to put this dividing line here just to separate the left-hand side from the right-hand side. Remember, this is not to be treated as an equation, so we're not going to be, say, subtracting cotan x from both sides, or dividing secant by both sides. The rules for equations do not work here. Okay, I want you to note that uh, the right-hand side here is just one term connected through multiplication. Here we have two terms. You want to let that right-hand side tell you what to do you have one term. Therefore, this is telling you you need to make this one term. And the only way you can accomplish that, really, other than through cancellation or substitution, would be through fractions. I also want you to notice that there are four different trig ratios, tan, cotan, secant, cosecant. All of them are different. None of these are squared, so we can't use any Pythagorean identities. It would be easier if we had fewer than 4, say 2. Well, we can do that by converting everything to a sine and cosine. Typically, changing everything to sine and cosine usually makes the problem easier. Do you recall all the various conversions for sine and cosine? Recall that the tangent is sine over cosine. The cotangent is cosine over sine. The secant is going to be 1 over cosine. And the cosecant is 1 over sine. On this right-hand side, if we clean this up, we get 1 over the cosine times the sine, which you'll notice is just one fraction. So again, that's a hint in what to do. We need to take these two fractions on the left-hand side and combine them to make one fraction. That means we'll need to get a common denominator, so let's do that right now. Since this first fraction has cosine and the second one has sine, we'll multiply top and bottom by sine. Similarly here, we'll multiply by cosine over cosine. So that way, the denominator will both be sine and cosine, like we have on the right-hand side. This first part gives us sine squared over cosine times sine. This second part gives us cosine squared over cosine times sine. Since we have a common denominator, we can write this as one big fraction now, all over a large numerator. So the sine squared and the cosine squared go on top. So this is the result. By now, you should recognize sine squared plus cosine squared is one of your identities. Remember, if you have anything squared, you'll want to refer to them. In any case, that's 1. And just like that, we are done. OK, now let's try another. Let's prove this one. I want you to note that the right-hand side is just one term, the sine. And since we have two terms on the left-hand side, one of which is a big fraction, what we'll want to do is we'll want to try to condense that into one big fraction. So again, we'll try that by trying to get a common denominator. How about we just write 1 as 1 plus the sine over 1 plus the sine? This way, we'll get the same thing on the bottom. This allows us to rewrite this in one big fraction. So we have 1 plus the sine minus the cosine squared. At this point, hopefully you recognize 1 minus cosine squared. That's one of your identities. The result is sine squared. You'll note now that our expression has lots of signs. Sine here, sine here, sine here, but not here. It's kind of what we want because on the right-hand side, just a sine as well. Up top in the numerator, since both of these terms have sine, let's go ahead and factor out one of the sines. So that gives us the sine of x coming out times the quantity 1 plus sine x. 
Hopefully now you can see the reason why this helps us. This gives us 1 plus sine x up top, same as the bottom. We can reduce those out. And you'll notice now all that we are left with is sine. And that finishes that problem. There is another way to tackle this problem, and we're going to do this in a way that's very different. If you're very good at uh, this kind of stuff or piecing together things, or if you're just interested in trying different techniques, then look at it like this. Multiply by 1 minus sine, top and bottom. The reason for that will become clear in a moment. If we multiply just the bottom, you will notice that what you have here is the difference of two squares. Both have 1. Both have sine x, one's positive, one's negative. Therefore, on the bottom, we're left with 1 squared minus sine squared. At this point, you should recognize what 1 minus sine squared is. It's cosine squared. If you were curious before why I did not decide to distribute the cosine to both terms on the inside, now you are seeing it. We can reduce them out here. It is the reason why up here I use 1 minus sine in the first place. Seeing this, I knew ahead of time that this would be the difference of two squares. And I knew ahead of time then that this would become cosine squared. So if you recognize that, what you can end up doing really is just a lot less writing. This is what we get as a result of it which becomes this after you distribute the negative. These two go away, and we're all done. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.